We're gonna invite our young people out at this time. Uh, those who are in fifth through 12th grade, sixth through 12th grade, you're gonna come here to the chapel room today and then you're gonna come right back in afterwards. Pastor Dan has a marvelous message for you. Amen. And then at the end of church, you can go over there to your youth center and you can play the hockey stream and all that other stuff that we got going for you next door. And then your mother can stick around and fix you a dinner, buy you a little dinner, something. You're going to come right this way here on my side here. Amen. Not, not that side first, over here. Let's give them a great big hand. All of our young people are going out today. Amen. Are y'all doing all right today? Oh, y'all sound sad today. Y'all act like the calves lost. Turn to your neighbor and say, they didn't lose. They were cheated out of their win. They didn't lose. They were just cheated out of their win. And don't worry about LeBron. I already got connection with God. God already said, hey, he'll stick around if y'all stick with him. All right. Give God some praise for LeBron James, Kevin Love, J.R., George Hill, and Larry Macon. Hey, man, I played with them all, so I just didn't hurt myself. <laughs> Say, here we go again. Say, here, Pastor, go again. Up in my Kool-Aid, up in my Kool-Aid. I, I said to you that I started off, and I'm almost finished. Say, he's almost finished. Say, we're going we gonna to drop all of this Dr. Field stuff after next week when we talk about what you can learn from a thug. Father's Day, but you'll be all right, my brothers. Sisters, you're going to like it, so you make sure you show up. Young girls, if you ain't got a date or a man or whatever else, you come and, man, you show up if you ain't got nobody. Just show up on next week. Have breakfast with us next door. Make sure you sign up because we're running out of space real quick. Bring daddy to breakfast between services, and it's going to be a marvelous, marvelous time. Uh, $5, all you have to contribute. Amen. Say, 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 relationships are hard. Now, now, last week, again, I told you married people, would you just listen to me? I said to you married people, don't listen to anything that I was talking about last week because I was talking to singles. Good. But wait next week. So, so often we're talking to married people. We always talk, and we make the assumption that everybody is married, and then we make the assumption that everybody is happily married when the truth of the matter is as we look at statistics and research, there are more people who are becoming single than ever before. And so, yeah, go and give God some praise. One person, she says she's happy singled. She says, thank the Lord, hallelujah. Jesus is so good now. But the truth of the matter is, singles need help as well. And that we need to preach to single people as well as married people and we need to preach to young people young people who ultimately want to become married and those who are moving out you know out of high school into their own kind of independence they need to learn something about how do you handle these kinds of relationships and I made some folk mad last week because I used that particular text that is up on the screen here in just a second where John talks about there are some people who were in his life who had to just go say go that he had to say goodbye to, that he had to say serenata, that he had to say uh, whatever the words are, ah, hasta la vista, whatever it is. They had to go goodbye. And we use the subject, good riddance, say good riddance. And even John said that there was somebody in his life that he had to say good riddance to goodbye. Paul said it also in several verses of his writings uh, where he said that there is a brother by the name of Demas and Demas hath forsaken me and has left me for this present world. Y'all remember that, don't you? And what Paul was saying is that demon, Demas was never with us. He was never for us and so he has not really left us because he had already gone because he was never one of us. Had he been one of us, he would have stayed with us. But because he did not stay with us, he was never one of us. Good riddance. And I said to you that there are certain people in your lives that you need to say good riddance to, especially these people who hurt and harm you, who are in fact abusive to you, and, and, and they know that they're not committed to you, and, and you're trying to make them love you, when the truth of the matter is they'll never love you because they have never really loved anybody, and the truth of the matter is some of them don't even love themselves. And so if they don't love themselves, how in the world do you expect them to understand what love is all about? 
And, and so sometimes it's just good that they leave you. As John says, they left us, but they were not a part of us. For if they had been a part of us, they would, not have, they would have stayed with us. They simply made it clear that none of them was really a part of us. Us. And so it was good riddance, and I gave you three points if you remember it. If you don't remember it, buy the tape. I can't preach the same sermon twice because you get mad at me. But, but, but I said to you that whenever you have to say good riddance, it's, it's inside of God's plan. You never should have been with the person in the beginning. I said to you, you got to remember God is trying to bless you and not curse you. That what God is trying to do is lift a burden off of you. There are some people who are in your life who are burdens in your life. There are sometimes relationships that are really burden relationship. And what God grace does is it kicks in and moves all burdens away. And so sometimes you ought to thank God that God left or lifted that burden. But also what he is trying to do is not only lift you, but he's trying to shift you. He's trying to shift you. Say, say shift you. I, I talked about that when I talked about destiny. That, that God has a destiny for each of us. That God wants us to go somewhere in life. And sometimes there are burdens that hold us back. And so he has to remove certain burdens or certain relationships in your life so that he can shift you to help you get to your destiny in life. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from above. And he wants to give you some of those good and perfect gifts. But he's got to sometimes shift you. I told you. The summer women talk about how men are like buses, you know. When one leaves, another one comes along. And I said to you, maybe the problem is it's not the bus, but it's the location that you're at. Maybe you're at the wrong bus stop. I have to be quick about it. You have the wrong bus stop and you're in the wrong location. Maybe you ought to just move from that particular location because the problem is when you catch the same bus at the same place, you ultimately get the same people on the same bus. Have I got a witness in the house? Some people, why? Some singles wonder why they're constantly messing up. That's the reason why you're messing up because you're always attracted to the wrong person on the bus. Get into a go to another route. You might get somebody different. So I said that sometimes God shifts you. He, he lifts burden. He shifts you. But I did say also that, that the right one cannot come as long as the wrong one is still hanging around. I, I know I, I ain't talking to no married people. Don't worry about it. She's going to stick with you. She'll hang with you. She should have left you a long time ago, but she's not going to do it now. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, maybe he wasn't talking to no married people. They're just in the room. But the truth of the matter is that, that what God does is, is that he, he cannot move the right one in when the wrong one is there. And so the right one comes along when the wrong one leaves. Oh, I know you got mad at me, married people. Formerly married people. Martin, will you talk to me today? Nobody will talk to me except Martin King behind the desk here. He's the only one looking at sin. Praise the Lord for Reverend Macon. But the truth of the matter is, relationships are tough in this day and era. In, in biblical time, dating was not much of an issue as it is today. Dating can be challenging. Josh, ha Josh Harris wrote a book entitled, Kiss Dating Goodbye. And what he was saying is that he had became so disenchanted with this thing called dating because ultimately it led somewhere where, where, where most people don't ultimately want to end up and so Josh Harris was so disappointed in it that he wrote that book Kiss Dating Goodbye but in Jesus time you didn't have to find a date in fact you didn't even have to find your future spouse because parents chose your date and even your future spouse you know, it is true that sometimes we do better pickings than our children. And in today's world, almost everything we know that dating comes from sources other than God. Say, other than God. In fact, much of the advice given to singles have nothing to do with God at all. Therefore, it is no wonder that dating sometimes is a nightmare. 
And too often it ends up in the S word too soon. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you know what that is. However, there's a way to date that will not cause you to lose your mind, mess up your morals, have children out of wedlock. There is a way to date that even keeps you from shacking up that in most cases leave people hurt, harmed, angry, disgusted, and downright busted. When it does not turn out especially to end up in holy matrimony walking down the aisles together. But there is a way, watch this, there is a way that you can date effectively. Can I say it? With your mind clear, say mind clear. Your pants on, your dress skirt down, your morals intact, and your conscience clear. But you gotta remember three words. And the three words that I wanna propose to you today is prospect, potential, say prospect, potential, and perfected. You see, dating relationships go through stages, or at least it ought to go through stages, and you ought to understand that the stages that dating goes through, and you ought not to confuse the stage of a date, because if you confuse the stage or the level of dating, you would discover that sometimes you will act as if the person is in this, what I'm going to call, perfected stage, when they're just really prospect. And other times, they, they are really in the prospect stage when you want to believe that they are in the potential slave stage, and in the process, you mess up everything. And, and so if you would just walk the stages with me in about two or three minutes, we can call today, and we can have a great time celebrating, and then next week, you can throw the rocks and stones and bananas and, and, and everything else at me. But, but, but the first stage of dating is prospect dating, for what I call prospect stage, say prospect date, sage. That is the stage that I call where you're randomly, randomly, randomly meeting people. Say randomly meeting people. Now let me tell you something, you ought not to be afraid to randomly meet people. You meet people everywhere. You ought not be afraid, shied away from meeting people. You know, you meet people uh, on the streets. You can meet uh, people at the mall. You can uh, meet people, well, you don't club, so you don't club. So you can't meet them at the club because you don't go there. Uh, you can meet people uh, on your job sometimes. Not a good thing to do. You can even meet people at church. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't, don't get quiet on me right now because the truth of the matter is there's just one or two of us who are just smart enough to look around and say, hey, I know where there's some good pickings at and it must be inside the church because those are church folk, those are Christian men, those are holy men, those are sanctified men. They believe in the word of God. They walk by faith and not by sight. They can't even see. And so since they can't see, I can make them believe in me. Have I got one witness in the house? Oh, y'all thought I was talking about women after men. I'm talking about men after women. Let's move on. Random, they, 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 they ran. these are random people you meet, people you just get to know from a distance. They get to know from a distance. You know, they sort of grab your attention. There's something about them that's appealing to your eyes. And, 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 and they are what I call prospects, say prospects. And, and you should never be afraid to meet prospects, but rather you ought to talk with prospects or random people with, watch this young people, discretion. You ought not to tell them everything about you. Have I got a witness? Can I say it again? You ought to talk with them with discretion. Don't tell them everything and don't tell them about how you feel about them in the prospect state. Can I preach this? In the prospect state where you're meeting random people, what you need to do is learn how to be a good interviewer. Can you wink back at me? You ought to learn how to interview them in the prospect state. Write that word down, say interview. Because you're trying to discover what kind of person they really are in the prospect state. And there's just a few questions. That's questions that you need to ask. I can't give you all the questions. I'm not Dr. Phil, but I'll give you a few of them. Uh, since I am Dr. Macon, I'll tell you one question that you ought to ask him. You ought to ask him first, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? I, I told you that the problem with relationship is that we forgot that scripture that says, be not unequally yoked together.
together with unbelievers. I know what you're saying. I'll straighten them out. I just told you that some people in the church right here been, been trying to straighten their husband out for 50 years. Are you a believer? Now, now, if they say no, don't run. Say, don't run. Say, don't run. Share Christ with them. Tell them what it means to be saved. Tell them what happens when, when King Jesus comes into your life. Tell them how to move from one level to another level in their life. Tell them how Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sin was buried and resurrected from the grave and early Sunday morning got up with all power and if they accept Christ in their life they will have power unbelievable don't run if they say no but if they say no after that run <laughs> have I got one witness in the house can, can, I, can I give you another question y'all just looking at me you, well, you watch you're going to need this here y'all better write this stuff down y'all going to need this here are you a believer in Christ how about this one here there ain't no kids in here. <sighs> Did all the kids leave? Put the hands on their ears and eyes too. Here's the second question you want to ask. Do you believe in sex before marriage? Now if they say, yes. <laughs> Run! All right, here's, here's another question. How about this here? What are your lifelong goals? Where are you heading? Uh, where, where, where are you going in life? And, and if they say nowhere, <laughs> run! Because if they say nowhere, that's where you're going to end up at. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know that's right. <laughs> now, now here's, a, here's, a, here's another one you want to ask them. You know, don't ask them, do they have a job? Because they might answer, I'm a businessman. <laughs> or they might answer, I'm a businesswoman. Ask them, what do you do to earn a living if they say drugs run what do you do to earn a living say what do you do to earn a living now now money is not the main thing in a relationship love is but never forget love don't pay no bills do I have a witness in the house Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know that's right. Love don't pay no bills. Here's a couple more and then I move on. Ask them, where, where are you from? Who are your people? How important to your family? Especially important, who are your people? Because you might be their cousin. <laughs> Ask them, how important is family to you? Do you have any kids? Are you married to, uh, uh, are you married to the mom of your kids? Is there any mama drama? With prospects, don't take them to your house and, and you don't go to theirs. Meet them somewhere in public. It, it, it's too soon to meet them in your house or theirs. Uh, and whatever you do, uh, when it comes down to prospect, can I, can I help you out just a little? Stop texting them. Stop Facebooking them. To prospect, you talk with prospects on the phone. Because anything you say and do on text message, it can be held. <laughs> Is that right? Can be held against you. But, but when you're texting people early in the relationship, it makes you, it makes you, whether you're man or woman, it makes you look cheap. It does. It makes you look cheap. Texting somebody, uh, you know, and if you text, you might end up sexing. Did I say anything? Only my young people heard what I said. If you're texting, you might end up sexing. So they don't want to text, so they ain't no sexing. My, my young people caught it there, and I don't want the old people to know anything about that. Call 
Call them up on the phone. Talk to them. Interview them. Give them these particular questions. Find out who they really are. Because they may end up being a Charles Manson. A Dahmer. Or some of you guys in here. But, 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 but you're at the prospect stage. The second stage is, is potential. Say potential. Potential is the second level of a relationship. And most, most prospects after the interview don't make it to potentials. Many of them get cut. And that ain't so bad. It is true, but potentials are the people who made it through the interview and they now sort of pique your interest. You kind of like them and, and the interview has went well and, and, and you've, you've finished all your interview questions over the phone and, and you like uh, feeling the fact that maybe this might just be the right one, but if they are prospect, let them go. It, 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 but, 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 but if they move to potential, it may work. It appears they, they sort of like you just as much as you like them, and you're walking around, you know, singing in the rain. They are now potential because they have some possibilities, but uh, you need to caution yourself. When it comes down to potentials, even though they pass the test of interviewing, you need to, you need, you need to know that everything glitters ain't gold. And what does that mean? That means that there's some things that look like gold ain't gold. There's something called fool's gold. And, and fool's gold ain't real gold at all. You know, half the brothers walk around here with fool's gold. They have 50 chains around them. They all go. They have all these rings and can and ain't got a job. And if they do have all that gold around them and all those diamonds around their fingers and all of that, and they ain't got a job, run! Fools go. Say fools go. And, and fools go. And, and fools go. And, and, and fools go. It's a kind of inferior go. So, so you need to, you know, this is the time to go from interview, watch this, to investigation. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, now, neighbor, now time to investigate. It, it's time to put on your Dick Tracy hat. Your Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass. Your Inspector Clouseau trench coat. In other words, it's time to go to the computer and Google their name. Have I got a witness? My advice in the potential state, it's time to get nosy. It's time to investigate. It's time to get crazy. It's time to figure out who that person is and what, if anything, they really want and do they, do they really have anything to hide. Now, if they ain't got nothing to hide, then what problem you have with me Googling your name? Now, now if you done did a stint of, of 10 or 15 years in jail, I would think and hope you would tell me that. I'm not against prisoners, et cetera. Yeah, I know, I know about justice reform, but I'm saying if you don't kill three people, you ought to let me know about that. I think that's some information I need to know. If you've been married seven times before, I, I had a fool that came to me, a lady came to me. She said, I'm, I'm so in love with this guy, Red Megan. Red Megan, I won't marry him. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, how, how many? I said, brother, how many times you been married? And he put his head down and can on, and he said, seven times. I said, get out of my office. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you what I also said, but that was to myself. It's time to investigate, say investigate. Be nosy, investigate, go crazy, figure out who they are. What do they want? What, was there, is there anything to hide? Inspect the fruit. The Bible says that the tree is known by the fruit it bears. And you can't know the tree unless you first inspect the fruit. Have I got a witness? Huh? And some of this fruit is going to drop down from the tree right next to you. Don't ignore it. Because it may have a big worm in this side. And if the investigation pulls up nothing, then it's time to really pray. Say pray. It's time to really pray. Say pray. 
it's time uh, it's time now uh, it's, it's, it's time really when, when you find out that they move from prospect to potential and maybe moving into this perfected stage that I'm going to talk about it's time to really pray because you're getting ready to have some real challenges on your hands and if they are in the potential state never forget there are no overnighters whether it's the Paris, France or East Cleveland Turn to your neighbor and say, you caught that. I, I'm trying to help somebody. You've got to keep your morals in check. Don't date alone with them. Don't take them to your house. Don't let them meet your children. Even at this point, it's too early because they have passed the potential state. And now you're saying, maybe there's something to this relationship called the mature state or the perfected state. This is where the relationship has matured. It's headed down the church house. You can now call them my boo. <laughs> Boy, old guys don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I was, I was, I was, I saw some years ago, I said, to, I think it was Daniel Larry. I said, you know, some girl told me that this dude was her boo. <laughs> and I said, this, this dude told me that this girl was his boo. And I said to them, I, I said to Larry, I don't know, I think Larry, Daniel, I said, what, what is a boo? <laughs> and, and they told me, so, oh, that's somebody that you really, that has really caught your attention. There's really a real relationship. Then now your girlfriend show enough. You know, so, 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 so you, you're moving into this thing called the boo. <laughs> It's really, it's, it's really a dangerous stage. Y'all need to get this. You, you pass the interview and, and they pass the investigation. You now know them pretty well. You start to being attached. You hear their voices regularly. You're calling them on the phone, texting them every now and then. You're calling them on the phone and, and you're talking to them all the time. It is that stage you start to feel an emotionally uh, involved and tied to them. It is that stage where you are desiring them intimately. Now, 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 that's perfectly normal, but it's spiritually illegal. Don't do it yet. Because that's how unwanted children are born out of wedlock. That's the stage where if things don't progress right, Cars get scratched up. <laughs> Tires get slashed. Profanity rises up degrees. Hurt feelings break out and soul ties break. I wish you get me. This is a very dangerous state. Uh, 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 my advice is is stay focused. I know you ain't gonna like this. Stay focused with your clothes on. And uh, there is a record that you need to put on at that point. It's won by Beyonce. Help me out. How does it go? If you like it, you should have put a ring on it. They late. The truth of the matter is, you know, Beyonce said, you know, she was caught in, in, in the scenario outside at, at some other place. She was at some other club and she was clubbing with another dude, you know, and she was dancing and a man came in to the club and he saw her dancing and he became jealous of her dancing with a new dude. And she told him, if you liked it, you should have put a ring on it. Uh, 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 uh. 
Somebody got happy in the house. And intimacy is not just physical, but intimacy is spiritual. And you want to be intimate with the Lord at this time. Be present with him, but be intimate with the Lord. Tell that brother, tell that sister, we're going to pray right now. We're going to seek the Lord's face. We love each other. We have moved out of the stage of just becoming acquaintance, but rather we're now with each other. We're emotionally tied to each other. And then now we've got some great challenges in our life. Now we're trying to move into something very perfecting, but we can't be intimate now it's real easy to do that but at the end of the day we've got to pray to God that we might remain pure and clear we got to testify about how good God is and if God can bring us through this that and the other I know God can take us through that kind of a stuff as well have I got a witness in the house you ought to tell him if you're serious about me you put a ring on it you'll wait until wedding day come and then we can say a million ways to love someone by Charlie Wilson Yes, come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise. Tell him you gotta wait. All right, Martin. They wouldn't listen to me. They're gonna get in trouble. And then I'm gonna have to come back and help them out, Martin. I tried to help them, Martin. But they won't listen. You tell them at that last stage to move into the perfected state what I need you to do is put a ring on it and I'm old fashioned go ask her daddy for her hand in marriage if you ain't got a daddy Ask granddaddy. If he ain't got a granddaddy, ask uncle. If he ain't got an uncle, ask surrogate father. And if he ain't got a, if he ain't got a surrogate father, you tell them you got a spiritual father named Dr. Larry Lawrence Macon Sr. And you bring them to me. I'm just old fashioned like that. I'm just old fashioned like that. Don't get it twisted prospect move maybe to potential move maybe to perfect so many lives have been destroyed because they got it twisted it gets hard in that third stage, but you got to really pray to God. Yes, all through, but you really got to pray to God then. And I tell you, something will happen in your life when you do it God's way. I close. Larry got mad at me last week. I preached about say goodbye. And today I talked about how not to say goodbye. And they still don't like me. Bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God. Oh God, right now we thank you, we love you, we adore you. We believe even now that we've been listening to the wrong language, the wrong ear, the wrong person. And the world is driving us not to lives of success and victory, but to lives of defeat, hurt, and harm. For those who are single, we've tried to minister, oh God, letting them know prospects are just randoms. Potentials need to be investigated perfected relationship need to be prayed over. Now, God, we pray that there'll be someone in here today who will get to know you in the free pardon of their sin. And we pray right now that you open up hearts and minds even now. Would you repeat after me? Say, dear God, I repent of all my sins and I confess that you are a savior. I need you always in my heart, my mind, my spirit, my soul. 
I pray, oh God, that I will walk in the ordered state that you have given me. You said to me that the steps of a good person are already ordered by the Lord. And could you pray this? Say, God, I join with pastor in blessing singles and married people. And even on next week, God, bring so many men and women, young people, to hear the message. We can learn something from different persons in the name of Jesus.